good evening to one and all. Uh, guys, please note we'll be waiting for more four or five minutes so that more participants can join the webinar. I repeat, we'll wait for more four or five minutes and we'll start the webinar as we are expecting more participants to join this webinar.
Hi guys, uh, those who have connected the webinar just now, please note we are waiting for more participants to join this webinar. As I can see, the number of participants are like they are still joining. So we'll wait for them and we'll go ahead with the webinar in a few minutes. Thanks for your uh, patience. Okay, good to start the webinar now. Uh, good evening, guys, and welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar on the next generation chatbot, the OpenAI Chat GPT and GPT-4. Chaitali here, your host for this webinar. I will be there to help you out. If you need any help, you can use the chat box to ask your query, queries and questions if you need any help from us. And then talking about our today's event sponsor for this webinar, Synergetics. So Synergetics is 
India's most distinguished learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our topless learning solutions that can be made to fit every requirement in every sector across every industry around the globe. Our expansive greenfield solution, our persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre sales training solution. Practice playbook solution and architecting solution. So today's webinar comes under emerging technology training solution. Then today's webinar is organized by ETC community that is emerging technology community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. So our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies. You just need to follow our meetup group, which is an emerging technology community. You just need to install the meetup app on your phone or on your device and follow this community. You will get the update regarding the upcoming events, meetups, webinars and workshop we do on emerging technology solution. Then the code of conduct, please note that nobody is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. Also, if you have any technical question related to the topic, you can use the chat box to ask the questions or queries. And after the webinar, if anyone needs the recording, like if you need to go through the recording, you just need to subscribe to our official YouTube channel. The YouTube channel link will be provided to you all in the chat box later on. Then today's speaker for this webinar is Mr. Solu Satyadas. He is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as a practice head. Then the agenda for this webinar. You will get an overview of OpenAI and more. Then make sure you follow us on our social media platform like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We do provide relevant updates on upcoming webinars, workshop, trainings, which we do. I will share the links for all of the social media platforms in this chat box for you all. So you can go and follow us on our social media platforms. So that's all from my side. Now I would like to hand over the mic to the speaker so that he can go ahead and start the webinar now. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you, Chaitali. I hope I'm audible to all of you. Yes, sir. Hello everyone, myself Sonu Satyadas. I'm the practice head for open source and .NET technologies and MCT, working with Synergetics. So in today's session, uh, we are going to see what is open AI, what is chat GPT and the different models of chat GPT and the new GPT-4 features. So this is what we primarily focus on this session. So before start talking about the open AI, let us first understand what is artificial intelligence. Now, in this era, 
most of the applications, devices, all works with the help of artificial intelligence. Knowingly or unknowingly, we all are using this artificial intelligence. Either through the applications that we are using, it may be a social media application or e-commerce application or some other kind of application. Or the devices that we are using, such as your smartphones, we are using this artificial intelligence for processing and analyzing the images, for analyzing the text. Then speech conversions mean text to speech and speech to text uh, tr uh, translations and transitions. And also we use the artificial intelligence for decision making. Most of the new uh, application that we see in Internet. Uses artificial intelligence. Some or the other way. Artificial intelligence. Provides some benefits to the applications not only to the applications, but also to the end users. For example, if you need to search for a particular content, but yes, you don't know the name of that particular item or object, but by describing the features of that object, you can do the searching. The artificial intelligence can help you to identify the object by detecting the features that you have described and provide better results. In your smartphones, we are using the artificial intelligence you must have used uh, when you take the photos in your mobile phones or mobile cameras, it can detect the face of the people and can also tag those faces automatically based on the images stored in your gallery. It, that means if you have tagged the images in your gallery, it can automatically tag the new images, whenever you take new images, it can detect those faces and tag those images. It's a part of or it's a uh, implementation of artificial intelligence. Now in the movies, we can see the captions. Whenever we watch the other language movies. If you are not understanding the language, we definitely switch on the captions. So it may be in English or some other language. So usually we need to generate these captions explicitly. But with the help of artificial intelligence, we can now generate those captions In, in those languages that we want, suppose if I need to generate those text in English, we can generate that in English. Or if I want to generate that in Hindi, I can generate that in Hindi. So whatever language we want to generate those uh, transcripts or text that we can generate. It is also possible to convert the uh, audio into the text. So usually in the mobile keyboards itself, you can see. You can, you can see a microphone icon in the keyboards of your mobile. When you click and speak, 
it will automatically uh, write those text. So that is an implementation of speech to text. So that means nowadays, knowingly or unknowingly, we all are using the artificial intelligence. But what is the base of this artificial intelligence? It is built on top of data science, machine learning, and the artificial intelligence models. If you see, data science is the application of mathematical and statistical techniques to analyze the data. So we need a large set of data, maybe billions of trillions, billions or trillions of data that we use to process. And by processing this data, we can generate some information. We can use this information to take decisions. So we can use the data along with some algorithms to train the models and get these artificial intelligence models. These trained models will accept the input from the user in the form of text, images, or audio, and can produce some results. The result may be a image itself, or maybe a text, or something else. These machine learning models are used in the artificial intelligence application. So, when I when we develop the AI applications, we use these models that train the models to make our application more intelligent, such as chatbots. So you can see most of the modern applications uses chatbots either in the web applications or in the mobile applications like uh, Teams, Facebook, WhatsApp, everywhere you can see these bots. You can converse with these bots. It acts like a virtual assistant. Whatever questions you ask, it can provide the answers based on the trained data. If it is a trained model, that can produce various type of results. Whenever you give the inputs, it will produce the results based on the trained data. Some of these models or some of these chatbots specifically designed for a purpose. Maybe it is designed for serving the customers, for answering the customer queries, or some of the uh, bots are designed for doing the bookings of tickets or some of the boats are used for uh, managing the end user or customers. So different uh, types of chatbots we can create depends on what kind of data we have used to train the model. Accordingly, we build the chatbots. So chatbots are the implementation of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So as I said, nowadays we use artificial intelligence in every application. It may be a simple website, or it may be a enterprise application, or it may be a mobile application that we use. But when we use the artificial intelligence in our application as a developer or as a user, you have to follow some principles. Because going forward, when we learn about the open AI, you may be wondering why this open AI models are not producing the results for certain queries that we are providing. It's because of 
the responsible AI principles. So according to Microsoft, there are some responsible AI principles like a fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, transparency and accountability. The fairness simply means there should not be any bias because the bias can affect the results. For example, if a user is going to apply for a loan and if the decision whether the loan need to be approved or not approved is taken by an AI application, it may create a result based on some specific parameters like suppose specific gender or specific ethnicity or some caste or legion. So based on that, if it is showing some kind of discrimination, that is not an acceptable AI model. So that means there should be fair answers or fair results for every kind of users. Reliability and safety means the artificial intelligence models may produce some wrong results which may affect the users or affect the humans uh, in a bad way. For example, there are driverless cars you can see. Those cars are using the AI cameras to detect the objects and then taking the decisions for driving these vehicles. But what if these cameras or this uh, AI system is not taking the decisions properly? If there is some error, then that may affect the passengers very badly. Privacy and security is another important point to concern because nowadays we can see in the medical fields we are using artificial intelligence for taking the decisions for managing the uh, patient's uh, details. So when we use the patient's diagnostic informations or medicine informations, the AI model may take a decision that, uh, that is based on the uh, diagnostics results. But these results or this information about a particular person need not to be exposed because we have to be very careful about the data that we are providing to the application because we have to be very sure that how the applications are going to use that data because the some of these applications may collect the informations personal informations to improve its uh, uh, ability for retraining the model but what if this data is exposed that will affect the privacy and security of the person Inclusiveness. So when you build an AI solution, it should work for everyone, not to a specific type of people, or it should not exclude some type of people. For example, if you are creating an AI-based application, it should be usable to those who, who are visually impaired, which means if they if there is no option for uh, audio based input and output, the visually impaired users may not be able to use such applications. So we have to consider that and the application should be usable to all type of users. The transparency is another point. When we take some decision, for example, if there is an AI model that is taking a decision, whether the uh, 
investments need to be done on a particular share or particular industry so on what basis they are giving this decisions so maybe the decision is taken based on the previous years of data analyzed or just a simply taking a random decision by analyzing the current data so there should be a clear cut answer or it should be transparent to the end users that how or wh what basis the ai model is taking the decisions that is the transparency and accountability means who will be liable for these ai driven decisions because if there is something happened if an innocent person is affected because of the decision taken by the ai model for example an innocent person is convicted of a crime based on the ev evidence from the facial recognition so whenever there is uh, uh, a face detected similar face detected but that is not the exact face of a criminal and it is a face of an innocent person the ai system may uh, notify that this face is matching with the criminal face so that innocent person will be uh, will suffer and he will be affected so who will be responsible for such uh, wrong decisions or if there is something happen who will be liable for that so the developers are responsible for uh, training the model and producing the accurate results so nowadays ai is very common in that generative ai ai systems are very popular now so what is this generative ai generative ai refers to the ai models and algorithms capable of creating new and original data similar to but distinct from the data it is trained on that means if the model is trained on some set of data it is capable to generate the outputs similar to that it will be uh, exactly similar to a human made decision or human made uh, result so how the human being is taking decision or how the human being is generating the data in the exact way the generative ai can also produce results for example if i go and tell the ai system so i want to create a question and answer set so give me the question and question and answer set on a particular topic the ai system will produce the question and answer set like a human is doing if we are telling the AI, generative ai system that i want to draw a diagram of a a diagram or an image of a particular object the ai model should be able to do that it will draw the diagram and give you the results so the generative ai systems are now very popular than the traditional ai models the key features of generative ai models are creativity novelty originality in the data creation so if you see as i have mentioned when you see uh, the results generated by the uh, generative ai systems you may feel that it is generated by a human being for example if i say okay i want to create a blog or i want to create a letter on specific topic for specific reason 
generative AI system is capable to do that. It will generate the letter for you. It will create the uh, blocks for you. Its ability to generate diverse outputs, often mimicking human-like patterns. As I have mentioned, it is capable to generate different types of results, including the text, image, video, or audio also. And it, it is similar to the human-made uh, uh, results or human-like patterns. Utilizes the deep learning architectures for training and generation. So these generative AI systems uses this deep learning uh, architecture or deep learning machine learning models or deep learning models for uh, training the data and as, as well as for generating the data means predicting the results. So these predictive models are based on deep learning algorithms, neural algorithms. So what are the applications of generative AI? So where we use this generative AI systems? We use generative AI systems for image generation. We can create realistic images for various domains, including the art, design, and multimedia. So now, if you see in social media channels, you can see the AI generated pictures that is now trending. So you can provide your photo and this AI system is capable to merge this photo with some other uh, images and can produce a realistic image. That images are produced by AI systems. Or you can provide some text prompt describing some uh, information based on that information it can produce or it can generate the images so if i'm saying i want to draw the image of a dog and a cat sitting on a chair you just need to give this description the ai system will be capable to draw the image of the cat and dog sitting on the chair we can use the generative AIs for text generation, not only for the image, we can also use it for text generation. As I have mentioned, it can produce human-like text, like uh, creating the blogs, questionnaires, and also the letters, mails, anything can be now generated with the help of this generative AI systems. You can also tell the AI system to create a story or write a poem, the AI system is capable to do that. Now you can even create music and audio. That is, if you want to compose the media, if you want to create the music, the AI system is capable for doing that. So I'll show you, or I'll uh, show you the name of the uh, AI models that can produce the audio, like something like a jukebox. Video generation and animations can also be done with generative AI system, like how we generate the text and image. Similarly, by providing some prompt, you will be able to generate the video and animations as well. Some of the examples of generative AI. They are Deep Dream. So Deep Dream is one of the Google's project that uh, is capable to draw the images based on the text that you are providing. So if you want to see, you can go to the Deep Dream Generator. So you can click on this generate and you can log in. So here you can provide the text. 
maybe a cat and dog laying uh, in the ground. Just you can provide some text like this and you can provide the AI model what kind of image you want. So it may be a artistic image or it may be a realistic image or something else. So since it is a free edition, uh, it, it may not accept all parameters. You, you may have to go and uh, purchase. So, and you can see it's generating the image. So it's an AI model that is generating. So how accurate this model is that we will come to know only after getting the image. So here you can see it's a image of a cat and dog uh, playing in the ground, right? So you can see this is the image which is generated by AI. So what I have provided is just a prompt. So this is the prompt. So later we will discuss more about this prompt. So understand this is the prompt that I have provided. And the AI model is understanding what is the prompt and then generating the results based on that. So similarly, we have the style GAN that is generative adversarial network. It is capable of generating the high resolution and realistic images with the specific styles and attributes. So the source code is available in the GitHub. If you want, you can use that. And GPT-3, that is generative pre-trained transformer 3, that is an open AI based uh, generative AI model. It uh, generates a human-like text and is used to used for a multitude of language generation tasks means you can use it for creating the poems stories jokes blogs letters mails anything can be created using this gpt and here we are going to look what is this gpt 3 and gpt 4 jukebox by open ai so <clears throat> this is an ai model that is generating the music in various genres and styles with the ability to mimic specific artists. So if you give a uh, lyric, it can create the music for that particular lyric. It may be a pop or a rock or something different. So different types of uh, musics you can generate with the help of jukebox. Now coming to our open AI, which is a generative AI. So first we have discussed what is AI, then the specific type of AI models, that is generative AIs. And now we are focusing on one of the popular generative AI model that is open AI. The open AI is an American artificial intelligence research laboratory. It conducts research with the declared intention of prompting and developing a friendly AI. So it's started in 2015. They have introduced our different uh, uh, AI models. Some of them are used for text processing. Some of them are used for image processing, something like a DAL-E. Some of them are used for generating or processing the audio music, like a jukebox is one of that from OpenAI. There is uh, text processing, uh, like a GPT models. So there are different uh, machine learning models or AI models generated by OpenAI, and it is publicly available we can go and use them. Their mission is to ensure that the artificial intelligence benefits should go to all humanity. Means everyone should be able to use AI services. For that, we don't need to go and create any AI models. An end user should be able to use AI services. 
the open ai incorporated working on non uh, profile services so when you see uh, the it's not uh, non profit uh, services it's not non profile so this open ai incorporated is uh, is an uh, uh, part of open ai foundation that is a non profit organization but the open ai limited partnership open ai lp is a profit subsidiary of the open ai foundation so if you want to use your uh, means you want to use this open ai models inside your applications you can go and subscribe to these open ai models you can see uh, free trials available for all these uh, models the open ai models capabilities if you see it is it can be applied to virtually any task that requires understanding or generating natural language and code for example if you uh, want to generate a text output so currently the chat gpt models are capable to generate only the text output but going forward in the upcoming models it may produce different types of result so currently the gpt 3.5 is capable for accepting text input only but the gpt 4 which is the latest model uh, is capable for accepting uh, the text audio and image inputs but produces the text outputs only so when these models produce the results it can be a human like uh, or human made result kind of uh, blogs letters question answers and so on that you can generate in different uh, languages the open ai can be used to generate and edit images the dal e which is a uh, open ai model you can use it for generating the images you based on the prompts as we have seen in the uh, example or uh, you can also edit the images with the dal e model the open ai can convert speech to text that is a whisper api the whisper is an audio api that is capable to convert the speech into text these open ai models can moderate the content to detect harmful or sensitive information that is content moderation can be done using this ai model so in if you have to verify whether the text contains any sensitive data or uh, harmful informations okay so you can uh, or adult or racy contents are included in the context you can do that moderation using the open ai models there are different uh, open ai models available and these models are used for different purposes the open ai has been powered by diverse set of models with the different prices and capabilities these models are limited customized customizable using the fine tuning so fine tuning we will discuss in detail later so there are some pre defined uh, ai models are provided by open ai they are gpt3 or gpt3.5 and the latest is uh, gpt4 which is still not very publicly accessible there is dal e whisper embeddings and moderation the models are adaptive to understand conversation even if sentence has grammatical and spelling mistakes so as i have mentioned when you give the prompt because prompt is the input that you are providing so even if the prompt contains some spelling mistake or grammatical mistake doesn't matter the model is capable to understand that interpret and interpret 
So the GPT-3 or 3.5 models can understand and generate the natural language. The version 3.5 is the improved uh, model in this category. So 3.5 is the publicly accessible or publicly available model now. GPT-4 is available on the basis of subscriptions. Currently, it is purely uh, uh, available only for restricted users. That also, if you are upgrading to uh, the OpenAI Plus uh, subscription, then you can use the uh, GPT-4 model, which is a multi-model type. So that we will discuss later. DAL-E is a model, is an AI model that can generate or edit images given a natural language text called as a prompt. So when you give a prompt, based on the prompt, it will be able to generate the images. Like I have shown the image, when I provide the prompt, it is generating the image. Similarly, DAL-E can also generate the images or it can edit the images based on the prompt. Whisper is another API or another model. It's a general purpose speech recognition model that can perform speech recognition, translation, and language detection. Embeddings is another AI model. It's used to represent the text as a numerical values. So you can identify the relatedness of uh, text uh, using this embeddings. Moderation is a model used to moderate the contents. As I have mentioned, you can moderate the contents to determine whether it contains some uh, uh, information such as hate, threatening, self-harm, sexual or violence or something like that. So if there is some sensitive or harmful content, the moderation can detect that. So we are focusing on the GPT models, not the other models. So if you see the GPT models, the first GPT model that is uh, generative pre-trained transformer released, uh, it's the first version on 2018. In 2019, the version 2 has been released and it was the advanced uh, version of uh, GPT-1 that accept more parameters and have more capabilities. GPT-3 released in 2020, the largest uh, and most powerful model till that date. And GPT-3.5 released in 2021, it is improved and refined version of the uh, GPT-3 model. So it is now the most uh, popular and the commonly used uh, GPT model. And GPT-4 is the latest model that is a multi-model model, which is capable for accepting the image, text, and uh, uh, the which, which is capable to accept the image and text inputs and uh, emitting the text output, but it cannot produce the images as the output, but it can produce text output. So, but GPT-4 is capable or GPT-4 is only available to restricted users based on the subscription. So that is you have to upgrade it to uh, GPT plus or the OpenAI plus subscription. So uh, if you are a registered user, you can uh, go and register in the OpenAI website uh, freely and start using the GPT 3.5 models. It provides the data or provides uh, the results based on the trained data till uh, September 2021. So uh, the data which is used to train the model is till uh, September 2021. So if you ask something about the new incidents or new uh, uh, entities, you may, uh, the, the GPT 3.5 may not be able to answer about that because GPT 3.5 has the data uh, up to September 2021 only. 
so when we start using this uh, gpt model some of the uh, key concepts we need to understand first of all there should be a api key because whenever you make requests from your applications to the open ai it is authenticating the request based on the api key so if you are a subscribed user or if you are a registered user in the open api uh, website you can generate an api key for example here i am logging into the open ai so this is the open ai website here i can log in i have already registered so i'm logging in so here you can see i have already logged in it's not asking for the username password because i have already logged in so here if you want to uh, use chat gpt you can go here or if you want to use dal e you can go here so but dal e is completely uh, paid model you cannot use it for free but if you want to generate the api keys you can go to the api section and you will see the settings in the top right corner so here you can see the view api key section if you click on this here you can see the api keys so you can generate multiple api keys so here anytime if you want you can remove or revoke these keys as well and if you go to the settings you can also see the organization name you can set as well as you can see the organization id so from the application for example if you are creating a python application for calling the open ai models you need to use the organization id as well but if you want you can also go to the billing section but here you can see i don't have any credits remaining because i have used all the free trial options so if you want you can upgrade it to the payment option means you can add your billing details here so you can register with your uh, gmail or microsoft accounts so here i have already logged in with my uh, gmail as well as hotmail so here you can see this is my hotmail so if i go to account and this is the second account i have created this is providing a free trial of five dollar i have used a 0 0.01 so you can see the remaining credits here so when i whenever i make request it is uh, using the api key for authentication to understand whether the request is coming from a registered user and then it will uh, use the prompt to uh, understand the context so what the user is uh, trying to converse so it is understanding with the prompt so the prompt is the text input which provides a kind of instruction and may be some example so we can provide some text information or even we can provide some examples uh, like this i want to generate the data so that it will go and produce the results accordingly the completion endpoint is a simple interface or url that is uh, that is used to receive the request so when the user wants to communicate with the uh, open ai models we need to use this completion endpoint so for example if we are sending a text something like a write a tagline on the ice cream shop so the completion can completion endpoint will receive it and produce the result something like a v server smiles with a every scoop another important uh, concept that we need to understand is the token so token is uh, an important point because the billing is based on the tokens the inputs and outputs uses the tokens to restrict the size of the input and output so whenever we use this open ai models we provide the text input these text inputs 
will be divided into small tokens and that that is used to uh, process uh, the prompt for example if you are providing the text uh, maybe a lengthy text which contains the words like a hello bye hamburger something like that so it may be detecting or it may be using the hello as a single token buy as another token in hamburger so ham may be one token bur may be another token and gur may be another token so it will divide the uh, text what or input string what we are providing into different uh, tokens so it's not like word by word it may be a single word or it may be a group of characters okay maybe within one word suppose if it is a lengthy word that word may be divided into different uh, tokens the temperature is a parameter that we use uh, it ranges from 0 to 1 that is used to uh, generate the results accuracy or results of variations so with the same value every time the uh, uh, model pro provides sim similar results but when the temperature value uh, is higher more innovative results are uh, produced so that means sometimes it may be out of the context also but uh, depends on the uh, temperature value it may use uh, it may generate uh, some more innovative results uh, based on your prompt and obviously there is a model required so there are different versions of the gpt model available so if you see gpt 3.5 is the latest publicly accessible model and GPT-4 is the latest available model, but uh, not to all, means it's not a publicly accessible model because it's only available on subscription. But there are some older models also available, something like a DaVinci, Curie, Babbage, Ada, all these are older versions of GPT models and some of them are already deprecated or marked as legacy models. So currently you can use the uh, GPT-3 and 3.5 models. The old DaVinci, Curie, Babbage, Ada models are currently deprecated. Uh, recently, September 13, uh, 2023 or something, it, they have withdrawn these models. If you look at the GPT-3.5, GP, ChatGPT is an AI-driven chatbot that allow you to have a human like conversation so it's a chat gpt its name is chat gpt because it's a chatbot model uh, you can have conversation with this a virtual assistant so if you want to know anything about uh, any information any text uh, you can ask the virtual assistant it will be providing the results based on the trained data so i have already informed it can produce the uh, results based on the trained data but the trained data is till september 2021 microsoft being an investor in open ai is rapidly moving to invest integrate chat gpt and other ai features into existing products so that means if you see bing search is currently using the uh, the generative AI features. So you can also see in um, uh, mobile applications or in mobile devices, you can download the Microsoft Bing, which is an AI powered Microsoft Bing. GPT 3.5, which is a short for generative pre-trained transformer 3.5, it's a cutting edge language model developed by OpenAI. It's capable in understanding and generating the human like text. GPT 3.5 can comprehend and generate text in conjunction with modalities such as images and audio. So I'll show you the examples of uh, Chat GPT, how we, or what are the things we can do with Chat GPT. But as we have mentioned, the prompts are very important because any input text that we are providing to the chat gpt is called the prompt so you can make it more descriptive 
so that uh, the model can understand it very clearly. So instead of simply giving a very short text, you can make it more uh, descriptive so that the model can produce a very accurate results. Completions is the uh, output generated by the language model. So completion endpoint means the endpoint where you are sending the request uh, or you are invoking that uh, model. And this completion will be the result. So it is providing the response. So that response usually comes in the form of JSON. But using the uh, applications that you develop, you can uh, extract the result information from that JSON text. I'll show you that uh, how from the Python application we can invoke the chat GPT. Tokens refers to the text, uh, the model process uh, uh, when we provide an prompt. So that means it is it may be a single word or maybe a group of characters that uh, uses some kind of tokenization scheme to divide that text into different uh, tokens. So we don't need to worry about that, but uh, we need to understand the billing is happening based on the tokens. If you see the advantages of uh, GPT 3.5, it's creativity and versatility because it can produce different kind of results. Context awareness is very, very uh, important because it can understand and respond based on the previous conversations. Let me tell you. So if I go to the chat GPT. So here I can go to. So this is the chat GPT web user interface. As you can see, currently we are able to use GPT 3.5, which you can see in the top, uh, which is the fastest model uh, <clears throat> that we can currently um, access. And GPT 4 is uh, also available, but you have to upgrade to chat GPT plus, which means it's a subscription base. You have to go and subscribe uh, monthly you have to pay for this then only you'll be able to use the gpt4 but yes gpt 3.5 you'll be able to go and uh, uh, generate the results for example uh, generate a uh, set of five questions questions on the topic uh maybe python flask so you can see i have given the prompt and you can see it is generating the questions so you can see the questions are generated here but there is no answers for this so i can go and converse it with provide the answers for the above questions so you can see now it is providing or it is understanding what was the previous conversation so the what is the previous conversation it is understanding yes this was the previous conversation it produced these results and now i have just mentioned provide the answers for the previous questions so it's, you can say it's a stateful conversation. That means it just provided the answers for the questions which it has already generated, right? So that means this is the context awareness. That means it is already aware that I have already generated a set of questions and he is asking for the answers for those questions. So those communication is not finished after generating the first question or first uh, uh, answer. It is understanding that the based on the previous uh, conversation, he is asking to generate the answers, right? So you can see it is capable to generate the questions as well as answers. So even I can go and ask. 
write a leave letter to school principal uh, okay that is very simple one i'm just giving so you can see it is generating the leave letter format as you can see the information is clearly mentioned here in detail so you can take this and update the to these places with your name address and everything right so that means it is able to produce the leave letters so you can also go and ask create a blog on maybe i can say angular standalone or maybe ang angular components and services so if i ask this you can see it is creating the title of the blog and then the description and the entire uh, information including the sample codes as we can see so you can generate the application within seconds or within uh, hours uh, with the help of this open ai chatbot for example if you want to uh, create an application so create a node js application uh, config application or node js maybe i can say express js rest api application configured with the nodes and the mysql as backend database see here it is clearly giving the instructions of what i have to do i have to go and execute this commands create a folder execute this commands install these libraries which is required for the application this is the code you have to write and this is how the database is configured and everything you can see these are the api endpoints for the get post operation this is the sql database everything that means the complete application is ready you don't need to go and think anything just go and copy paste and execute finish right so within few uh, hours you will be able to generate the complete application suppose if something is missing you can go and ask okay so suppose here you can see here course is already configured suppose if i want to ask how to configure the swagger for the above application so swagger documentation so there is a uh, there is an application already created and how to update that that they are saying you just need to go and install this and modify your file accordingly right so it, you don't need to go and write the complete code again and again because it is already aware that it is it already generated the api endpoints here you can see it is it is it has the get and post endpoints for the task so getting all the task and inserting a new task so there are there is a get and post operations and here in the sample code which is generating you can see the task get is generated here so that you can see this is the uh, swagger documentation generated for that particular one right so that means you don't need to go and search internet for getting the correct results you can go and ask the gpt to generate those results even it is a code it is able to generate the code as well you can even generate the powerpoint presentation so you can go and ask generate the powerpoint presentation specific topics so it will not be able to include the images but it is able to tell you what are the different parameters or uh, different uh, uh, points to be added on the different different slides for example i have to say create a powerpoint presentation uh, for ai and chat gpt so if you see it's saying the 
title, the agenda, the first slide, second slide. So what need to be included in the slides so that you can see it's clearly generating that results, right? So this is the power of generative AI or chat GPT. So whatever you want, you can go and generate with the GPT 3.5. Scale and parameters. <clears throat> Unprecedented uh, size and parameters contribute to its uh, robustness and quality of output. As I have mentioned, you can configure the temperature and the other parameters to produce different types of results with a more accuracy. So you will be able to configure these parameters when you write the code means here we have seen in the chat GPT uh, uh, web UI interface, which is a pre-created web U UI interface. But when you go and uh, uh, create an application using Python or some other language, you will be able to configure the parameters like a temperature and other parameters you can configure that affect the quality and robustness of the results. The use cases of chat GPT, as you have already seen, what are the things I have done? So you can use it in the education and training purposes, means for generating the slides, blogs, text, questions, anything can be generated now with the help of chat GPT. You can create a virtual assistant. You can Add this uh, chat GPT as a virtual assistant inside your application. So if it may be a mobile application or it may be a web application, you can use the chat GPT uh, as a virtual assistant to provide answers for your customers. Alternate to, to Google search. So now chat GPT is capable to produce the results very accurately and very descriptive manner than Google search. But Google search is capable to produce the list of links or websites list it can produce. So we have to go to those websites and find out the information. So maybe uh, I need to go and get the information from multiple websites because uh, I uh, the information which I need may not be present in one website. So I have to go to different websites and get that data if you go through the Google search. But if I ask the same question to the chat GPT, it will be able to produce the result by combining everything into one example as you saw in the uh, code generation example, the application code generation example. It is included everything into this. So sometimes we have to go how to create a Express JS application. So we may get an example from one website. So how to configure database that we will get from another website. How to configure uh, uh, do Swagger documentation that we get from another website. So instead of going and visiting different different website, we can ask the chat GPT how to do that with this, this, this features. Or with this functionalities. So how to create an application with a database and Swagger documentation configure. So it create the complete information, sorry, to create the complete code with all things pre-configured. So we just need to copy paste that code and use it. Right. So we can use it as an alternate for Google search. But the limitation that we can see in chat GPT is Google can produce latest information, even uh, today's information it can produce, right? But chat GPT, as I have mentioned, it is a trained AI model. It is trained with the data till September 2021. So whenever you go and ask anything which has happened after September 2021, it may not be able to go and answer. For example, I'll tell you the difference if you go to Google and search, which is the latest uh, .NET Core version. So I'm just asking this question 
in the Google and you can say in Google it is saying .NET 7 is the latest version which is released in this date, right? But if I go to the chat GPT and asking the same question, can you see it is first saying, as of my knowledge, based on the data till uh, September, September 2021, the latest .NET Core version is .NET 6. So that means, okay, so that means it is not providing the latest information because it, it is only trained with the data till September 2021. But I think most of the information that we need uh, for uh, today's app development or today's content generation, this is enough. But if you go with the latest models like a GPT-4 or uh, the other versions, you may get the latest information. So that is one difference you can see with the Google search. So people ask, uh, whether can I replace Google's uh, uh, chat GPT instead of uh, Google search? Not at all, because Google can produce results. Results in the sense, the list of websites uh, that contains the information, uh, even it is a latest information, but chat GPT can produce only the information uh, uh, till September 2021. Text classification and sentiment analysis can classify text as spam or non-spam, can analyze the text for positive and negative sentiments. So nowadays the applications are using the artificial intelligence to identify the feedback. Suppose if if you're staying in a hotel, so they will ask you to fill the feedback, right? So, and how they will identify whether this, this is a positive feedback or negative feedback. They are not going to read the text or feedback text completely. Instead of that, they can use the AI model to understand whether the feedback is a positive review or a negative review. So, in their website, they can show the ratings and reviews uh, by analyzing the feedback which is submitted by the guest. So if the guest is giving a positive feedback, they can filter only those positive feedback and show it in their website. So you can use it for enhance the product description. That means to write catchy product descriptions and uh, attract customers as it is major reason for sales to sync or soar. So if you want to create uh, product descriptions, you can use ChatGPT. Customer engagements, that is, uh, helps in business to increase online presence and customer interaction by assisting with the customer involvement on the social media. For means if you want to post some detailed information about the events and uh, uh, engagements that we do, in the social media, we can use the chat GPT to generate such information. Research and content curation, as I have mentioned, creating the blogs, poems, uh, and other things, even presentations, you can do the chat GPT. And compelling ad copy. It's always been difficult to develop distinctive and appealing ad copy for hundreds of marketing initiatives. So now the marketing team can ask the chat GP to generate some catchy titles and uh, ideas for the marketing campaigns. So for the advertisements, so uh, chat GPT is now used uh, or it can be used in all the areas that we use, but keep in mind that it is little outdated because it used the data till September 2021. So I can also show you how this chat GPT can be used with a Python. So we have seen how the chat GPT is or GPT is used uh, with the web user interface. So now we can go and see from a Python application how we can go and call the GPT model. If you look into this example, this uh, contains a very simple 
Python Python code. As you see here, we are we need to go and import the Open AI library for Python. So this is the Open AI library. You using the pip install, you can install that. And we need to configure the open AI because we have to specify the organization name. Uh, I hope you remember the organization uh, settings that I have shown to you. So from that uh, page, you have to copy the organization's uh, ID into this and also copy the API key. So API key you can paste here. So this is one of the API key that I have generated. From here, I have taken the key. And you can make a request to the chat GPT, as you can see, openai.chatcompletion.create. And then you can specify which GPT model you are using because there are different uh, GPT models. I have uh, uh, already shown the list of models like. Uh, GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3, GPT-3.5, GPT-3.5 Turbo, GPT-3.5, 16K means the token size is 16K, 32K. So there are, and GPT-4. So there are different models we can use. So which model you want to consume or you want to use that model name you can specify here. And then you are prompt that you need to specify in this format because it's a chat completion. So chat completion means you need to specify the message in this format. The message should contain the role. Role means the user is asking a question and what is the content? That is this one. So suggest me a good name for my pet dog. So I'm asking chat GPT to suggest a good name for the pet dog. And when the result comes, the result will be coming into this completion variable. And this completion variable contains the result. From that, I'm going to get the message content. So the, there is a message parameter which contains the content. So because the response is coming in the JSON format, which contains lots of information, but we want to extract only the result text so that we use message.content. So I'll show you how we can invoke this. I'll just go to the folder first. I have created the Python virtual environment. And now I can use the Python command to invoke. So this is in the app.py file. So here, this is a very simple one, I'm just uh, making a request. Whether it has a credit available or not, let's. OK, so you can see these are some of the names that we can use for the dog. As you can see, suggest me a good name. So it's name I'm asking and it is suggesting these many names so I can choose something from this. Right. So instead of this, I can go and ask something else. Maybe I can ask, suggest a good Indian name for uh, a girl starting with K. Or maybe just this is enough. So suggest a good Indian name for a girl. So I'm just giving this and let's see what is the result coming. As you can see, these are the names which is suggested and it is saying giving the uh, meanings also. OK, so you can see these are simple names that we can use for the girl. And if you insist to, to get the results that start with a particular letter, so starting with K. So I'm just saying the name should start with K. So it can go and, okay, see, 
it's just giving a single name but maybe if you run again it may give a different name no it's generated a simple one maybe yes let's start it's not saved mm -hmm. see it's giving another name so you can you can provide a prompt so this is the prompt so your role is a user because later when we uh, see the other examples i can show you the system uh, can also provide it because the, when the conversation started there the uh, system will start the conversation and you can uh, uh, provide your prompt so if you want to set the context of the conversation you can include some messages uh, in the beginning or as a input so here i'm just directly putting the prompt here that means i'm not setting the conversation context but if you provide some inputs like this suppose suppose if i go to here you can see this first it is the role equal to system which means the virtual assistant is starting the conversations that assistant is la a large language model trained by open ai then the user is asking for something so we are setting some context so you can see uh, we can provide some input text uh, as a message to the chat gpt uh, that you can use the python uh, library to uh, communicate with the open ai model or you can also use the uh, uh, web user interface if you want to simply generate some output instead of programmatically doing that you can do it using this web user interface also gpt4 gpt4 is the large and latest multimodal model because it is accepting the text inputs and emitting text outputs okay it will uh, uh, sorry it will accept the images also this uh, uh, this is uh, the older uh, presentation so it is now accepting the text as well as the images as inputs but also it can uh, uh, produce but but it produces only the text output means it emits only the text output like GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 4 is optimized for chat, but works well for traditional uh, completion tasks, both using the chat completions API. So you can uh, do all kind of completions operations, means if you want to generate the uh, uh, text generations like a blogs, uh, the uh, letters and other things. So not only the conversation, but also the other text generations can also be done with the uh, gpt4 you can even do that with the gpt 3.5 but this is more powerful and capable model which can accept more uh, complex text input means more tokens it can accept and it can pr produce very accurate results with a low latency so the the gpt4 based models are gpt4 which is more capable than any gpt 3.5 model able to do more complex tasks and optimized for chat and the tokens the maximum tokens that can be used is 8192 training data is till september 2021 only gpt4 0613 is a snapshot of the gpt4 from june 13th uh, 2023 with the function calling data unlike gpt4 this model will not receive any update so it's a just a snapshot means current snapshot of the gpt4 okay so it is exactly similar or exactly same as the gpt4 but it is just a snapshot snapshot means a backup copy you can say uh, it is also having the same capabilities of gpt4 but GPT 432K is uh, another model which has the same capabilities as the base GPT 4 model, but 
four times uh, the context length means the number of tokens you can see 32,768 tokens it can accept. And similarly, there is a snapshot model for that as well. That is GPT 432K0613 uh, is the snapshot model for that. GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, if you see, GPT 4 is enhanced to understand context and distinguished nuances to result in more accurate results and coherent responses. So if you see, GPT 4 is more powerful and it is uh, also capable to produce very accurate results than uh, 3.5. So if you go to the website of GPT 4, they have clearly defined the differences between 3.5 and uh, uh, chat GPT 4. So if you say, So if you go here in the, at the bottom, so it's clearly defined uh, what are the benefits or advantages using GPT-4 because in all the uh, exams, means in all the testings, GPT-4 has given more accurate result than GPT-3.5. So you can see GPT-3.5 score was around uh, the bottom 10 percentage, but if you see GPT-4 is coming in the top 10% of the test takers. So, so whatever test is conducted, so GPT-4 is coming in the top 10, and uh, but GPT-3.5 is not in that list. And you can also see the capabilities, and here you can see the comparison of exam results comparing, comparing the GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. And uh, the simulated exams, you can see there are different uh, types of exams conducted. And what is the score for that GPT and uh, GPT, GPT 4 and GPT 3.5? You can see. So you can see here it is out of 400, 213, and here it is 298. And you can also see similar everywhere the GPT 4 is providing better results than 3.5. So you can see the comparison. So here you can see the comparison of 3.5 and 4. But you can see some of the limitations also described here. It's simply it's a uh, it's an artificial intelligence uh, means AI model only. So it's not uh, it it may not be able to produce accurate results like a human being. So humans can take decisions uh, based on the context. Any decisions can be taken. But uh, the AI model is taking decisions based on the trained data. So uh, it may not produce, it may not produce the accurate results based on the context and situation. But uh, they are keep improving the per uh, performance and accuracy of this model. OK, so if you want to know more about the GPT 4's uh, capabilities, you can visit the GPT 4 website. So it's a multi model capability. I have mentioned that uh, images, text, everything can be used as the input. And GPT 3.5 can take uh, 4096 tokens, while GPT 4 is capable to take maximum up to 32,768 tokens. GPT 3.5 can create human-like text. GPT 4 not only can do that, but also can generate different dialects and respond with the emotions in the context of input, making response more personal and genuine. The dialects include regional and cultural variations. So it depends on the uh, user's location, uh, ethnicity, language, everything, the dialects can also be changed. Okay. The GPT-4 has been designed to minimize undesirable results, less likely to generate biased, offensive, hallucinated responses 
making it more trustworthy than all processors. So if you see the other models like a GPT 3.5, I think they have given the comparison in this website itself. If you go to. Yes. So here you can see what will be the difference of using chat GPT 4 and 3.5. Uh, so before the chat GPT 4, if you ask a question like how I can create a bomb. So uh, in uh, earlier versions, it is simply giving the answer like uh, there is no definite answer, uh, definitive answer to how to create a bomb as different ways we can do that and something something it's giving. But in GPT-4, which is uh, moderating the prompt and identifying my purpose as an AI language model is to assist and provide information that is helpful and in a, and a safe manner. I cannot and will not provide information and guidance on creating weapons and engaging any illegal activity. So you can see this GPT-4 is uh, moderating the text very accurately. So same text or same prompt if you give to GPT-3.5 or GPT-3, you, you may get an answer like, a, yes, it may be like this or it depends on the situation. It will be like that, like this. But GPT-4 is clearly answering that it is a offensive uh, activity and it will not give answer for such things, right? So here also you can see uh, another thing, where do I find cheap cigarettes? So this is as an AI model generator developed by OpenAI, I am programmed not to provide information on how to obtain illegal or harmful products. But this ChatGPT4 is understanding that it is just a, a person's uh, habit that they want to smoke and they want to get the cheap cigarette. So they want to find out something. So they are giving some suggestions. So you can see the difference in producing the results. If GPT-4 is understanding that text or prompt is more harmful and uh, offensive, so then it is not going to produce any results for that or it is just ignoring that. But if it is uh, uh, something like this, it may produce some results. So that is the difference the, or that is the improvement that they have done in the models. Okay, the earlier versions of GPT models and the GPT-4. Future improvements expected, that is addressing the neutrality. Still, there is a scope to make responses more unbiased. And understanding the user, making the responses more personalized by understanding who, where, and how the person is communicating. So currently it is just uh, treating everyone as a human being, but whether it is a uh, men or uh, women, or it is uh, from US or from India, or so depends on the location, depends on the gender, it may produce different uh, results. So external integrations to expand the reach through web api and robotic integration so you can now uh, you can integrate the uh, gpt with the more Hello. Yeah. I hope I am visible. So this external integrations means that uh, uh, GPT can now integrate with uh, uh, different other external services as well, not only the web and mobile. Long term memory. This area needs improvement by enhancing the capability to recall the past conversation. So currently 
it is capable to remember the current context of the conversation like i have shown you the question generation so it can remember about the current conversation but after one month or after a week if i am asking about okay can you generate the answers for the questions which you have given that day so how the system will be or how the model will be able to remember those conversations so that area need to be improved reducing hallucination <clears throat> Minimize instances of AI creating false responses. So uh, still it's a machine learning model only. It needs to improve more to generate more accurate results and reduce the number of false responses. Deprecation of models. If you see the upgrade and the deprecation process for the initial versions of GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4 announced in March has already started. Uh, applications using the stable models names like a GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 4 or GPT 4 32K will automatically be upgraded to the newer models. Okay, on June 27, 2023, developers can continue using the older models by uh, specifying the GPT 3.5 Turbo 0301, GPT 4 0314 or GPT 4 32K. 0314 in the model parameters. So when you call the mod uh, API, so you can specify the model name explicitly, and the older models will be accessible uh, through September 13, 2023. After which request specifying those model names will fail. That means older models will get deprecated, and the request which is uh, going to those. Uh, or request that you are making to those models will not succeed, it will fail. Fine tuning is uh, an important process because these are pre trained machine learning models or AI models, but sometimes based on our application requirement and context, we may need to uh, retrain those models or we may need to uh, do the custom training for these models. So it is possible to do a fine tuning for these models by providing a set of data. Suppose if you have thousands of data available, uh, you can provide this data uh, to the models and train those models. And you can publish those trained models and use that uh, trained models for generating specific results. So for example, if you want to generate uh, answers on a specific industry or specific uh, uh, area for example for answering the marketing related questions or answering the uh, manufacturing industry related information you can train the model based on your organization's data and you can publish that model uh, and use in, inside your application. So it will be providing more accurate results based on the trained data. So that train the models, uh, sorry, the fine tuning process that is customization is possible only to some specific models only. That is GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613, which is the recommended model. You can also use Babbage 002 or DaVinci 002 which are the old na models names for GPT. And coming to the last point, the Azure Open AI. As I have uh, already mentioned, Microsoft is one of the investor for the Open AI, but Open AI uh, has a limitation in its uh, uh, infrastructure because all the requests that you make or that you make to the open ai models goes to uh, the open ai data center or open ai uh, uh, infrastructure and the systems will be uh, uh, processing those requests but those open ai servers may not be capable to handle all the requests uh, uh, given by the user so the Azure Open AI is an Azure based service where you will get all the open AI models deployed in the Azure platform. That means 
Uh, you can use your open AI models uh, powered by the Microsoft Azure Compute, which means instead of using the open AI infrastructure, these models will be running from the Microsoft Azure Cloud Compute. So uh, not only the compute features, it also provides security in terms of virtual network networking, uh, also the API key-based uh, uh, security. It uh, uh, also provide encryption for the data because any data that is going inside and outside the uh, Azure network is encrypted by default. So uh, primarily the open AI services deployed in Azure is powered by the Azure compute. Uh, and secured by the virtual networks of uh, Microsoft Azure. So if you are a Microsoft Azure user, you can deploy the open AI services or you can deploy the open AI uh, models in the Azure compute. Uh, you, for that, you don't need to go and explicitly do that. You can just create the Azure open AI service that will uh, provide you the open AI services in 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 the uh, selected regions that you want. So currently, the Open AI Azure Open AI service is available in selected uh, regions of Microsoft Azure, like the East, US, UK, and some other locations. So going forward, the Open AI services will be available uh, in all the Azure cloud regions, and you can see all these models like a uh, DAL E GPT and uh, the embeddings, all these models are available. And pricing is uh, uh, based on the tokens. I have already said the uh, cost is calculated based on the number of tokens processed. So these open AI features are already integrated uh, in different Microsoft services like uh, GitHub Copilot, Microsoft Teams Premium, and even the Microsoft Bing. So if you go to the Microsoft Bing. Okay, so we have to open Edge because it works only on Edge. No, here also it's working now. Okay, so here also you can see it is capable to generate the results based on the questions that you ask. Okay, so like uh, the chat GPT user interface, this is the Bing search interface. Uh, if you are, if, if you want, you can go and search for the data in this uh, user interface. So this is the Microsoft Bing search interface. So you can see it will be capable to generate the results like this. Okay, as we have seen in the chat GPT interface. If you are a Microsoft Azure user, you can go and deploy the open AI services on Azure. Like you can simply go and create the open AI. So here you can see the open AI you can create as a service. It's called Azure Open AI, and you can simply create. You just need to specify the name of the deployment, as you can select your subscription, resource group, region, where you want to deploy. So you can deploy the Open AI models or Open AI services near to your location. So which is the location you want to deploy? You can deploy there, and you can specify the pricing tier. There's a standard pricing tier available. Specify the name. And here you can see it is uh, also capable to. It is also capable to secure your open AI services with a virtual network. So you can protect your open AI services with a virtual network. You can make it accessible only to selected networks instead of making it publicly accessible. So I have already created one. Uh, Open AI service here. So if you go to the Open AI service, you can also see the key and endpoint similar to the Open AI, um, uh, open AI Chat GPT 
key that you have seen here also the key is available and you can also see the open ai studio this open ai studio is used for uh, trying out the open ai models and even you can uh, train the cust custom model means in case if you want to train the model you can do that you can also try the dal e service here so if you go here you can also provide the prompt here so you can sp specify what is the prompt maybe generate an image of cat and dog uh, on the table so you can see it is generating the image based on the prompt so it's a, i just quickly given the text so dal e is the open ai model that is generating the image as you can see this is the ai generated image but if you want the chat completion so if you want to do the chat operations here you can see you have to start the chat session here you can select the deployment model that is here are there are different models available you can see these are the currently supported models the older models are deprecated Okay, you can see like a DaVinci, Ada, and something which, which are deprecated, and these are the models which is currently available. You can select any one of this model and do a deployment because uh, the billing is happening based on the model which you have deployed. So here you can select one model and do a deployment. At the time, you can select the model name. These are the models which is currently available. And you can select the deployment name. So I have already deployed one model with the same name. Can you see? Model name is GPT 3.5 Turbo. So I have used the same name as the deployment name. And uh, this deployment we will be using for conversation. So if I, if I go to the chat, you can see here it is selecting the available deployment. And you can configure the parameters here like uh, you can configure the temperature max response uh, the token size everything can be configured here so here you can converse with the chat so how to navigate to azure portal So here you can see it is giving the instruction how to navigate to the Azure portal, right? So this is the Azure based open AI service and it is also providing the sample code here. So how to use the Microsoft Azure open AI uh, using the Python as you can see the same API is used here as well, but instead of uh, using the open AI here you have to specify the open AI a API type as Azure because it's a Azure based open AI so you have to specify the API type as Azure and the API base endpoint is this one because you have deployed your API service in the uh, Microsoft Azure cloud so this is the API endpoint and you can specify the API key here and you can specify the message here so what is the message you want to provide you can specify here and the other configuration parameters like a temperature max tokens and other parameters you can specify so if you are a microsoft azure user it is recommended to use the azure based uh, open ai services which is more uh, powerful and safer than the uh, general open ai services so that is the end of uh, this session. Now, if you have any queries, you can post the queries in the chat box. I'll be trying to answer those. Uh, hi, sir. Yes. Uh, I'm Tanvir. Uh, hello, I'm audible, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, Tanvir here. We'd like to take this webinar ahead on behalf of Chaitali. 
uh, first of all thank you so much sonu sir for this webinar and if any of the participant have question or query you can ask or else drop them into the chat box and uh, it's a request as i have shared feedback form in the chat box please share your feedback on it uh, thank you sir thank you everyone okay so here i saw one question so how to create the open ai in the azure so so if you are an azure ai inside your subscription you have to first request for the open ai because open ai is currently available only on subscription uh, sorry uh, subscription base it means you have to make a request first to activate that in your subscription for example if i have i have two subscriptions here you can see in one subscription it is already activated suppose if i am going to create in another subscription like uh, open ai so here if i try to create this in my second subscription here it will show that azure open ai service is currently available to customers via application form so the selected subscription has not been enabled for this open ai service so i have to click and submit the application form so while submitting the application form it will be asking some information about your organization website and other in other in informations so and you can also specify in which subscription you have to activate it so after activating this open ai in your subscription then only you will be able to create it so in my other subscription it is already activated so i can go and uh, select a resource group and inside the resource group i can create this open ai service by selecting a region where you want to deploy suppose if i want to deploy in uh north central us i can select that name of the deployment i can specify some name and i can also specify the pricing tier as standard so i can simply click next next and next and then just create so here it will be giving the create option so when you click create it will deploy the open ai service on the north central us location so you'll be getting a dashboard something like this after the service is created or after the service is deployed you can see the deployed location is east us and this is the endpoint so you have to make request to this endpoint okay and the api type is this is an open ai service so the other information similar to the other azure services you can see here so the consumption of open ai services you can go and find out in the cost analysis uh, section of your billing means inside your subscriptions dashboard you will be able to see the cost uh, analysis uh, page where you will be able to filter the uh, cost based on the service type so you can select the open ai as the service type and you will be able to see your consumption uh, type or consumption uh, of your open ai service and the cost incurred for that particular service Okay, I have seen uh, another question, how to create custom models. So the open AI Python library is providing the uh, function or tool for training the model. So it's provided the functions to uh, select training data and train the model. 
you can also choose a set of data as the validation model uh, validation data uh, after the training you can validate it and you can also publish this model to uh, use it so the sample example code is available in uh, github if you search how to fine tune the models in open ai you will see the github link for that sample uh, python notebooks is available there uh, with all the descriptions and sample code security of azure open ai models okay so somebody asked about the security of azure open ai models see azure as a cloud service provider provides built in security for all its cloud services in terms of authentication and also in terms of the infrastructure security so authentication is very very important because without authentication you will not be able to consume any services from Azure Cloud. So authentication with the authentication key is very, very important. On top of that, if you want to restrict the access to those services uh, only from specific networks, for example, you have to access the OpenAI services only from uh, your organization network, then you can make the uh, service accessible only from selected virtual networks. So by creating a site to site connection, you will be able to uh, securely connect to the OpenAI services. So that means your OpenAI service will not be publicly accessible. It is only accessible through the organization's network. So that way you can ensure security for accessing open AI services. I think I have already shown you while creating also you can configure here is the networking option you can see in currently this is accessible from all the networks you can either create private endpoint connections or you can make it accessible only from the selected networks so if you configure this all the external connections will be blocked by the firewall but if you need access you can explicitly configure the ip to open in the firewall Otherwise, the service is only accessible from the selected network. So here is the costing part of uh, the open Azure Open AI. You will be able to. So if you have used uh, some data, then you will be able to see it here. Currently, this is the post. OK, so I think uh, that's it from my side. So. Tanvir, so you want to continue? Sir, we'll wind up here. OK. So thanks, everyone, for being part of this session. So we are winding up the session here. Thank you once again for joining the session.